morning, this is a follow up to the video I did yesterday about Zach Hardacre and getting caught with doing cocaine after a match um, and it's bigger than him, it's a bigger issue there. there's other players in his own sport really Rangi Chase who've done it this season um, as a young young cricketer who's, who's done it this season this year a female jab in the pros obviously can be done for steroids which is a different issue but again Doping is still there as well. Um, and I watched Brian McDermott, the lead Rhinos coach, uh, brief interview on the uh, Super League show, and it is chicken it. It was piss poor response. And his, his, his body language said he didn't want to be there talking about it. His team have just won a trophy, but he didn't want to talk about issues within his sport and sport in general. He did not want to talk about it, whether that's coming from high up, going, we do not want to talk about this, or him personally. He was clearly not wanting to be there discussing the issues at hand. Then you've got other implications. This is not a new thing. Um, Mike Ribeiro, nice hockey player, has had to retire or take a year's retirement because he's dealing with personal substance abuse issues. Um, Gascoigne is a prime example of what happens when substance abuse gets out of hand and no one steps in to control the issue. Clearly. <clears throat> So, where do we go from here? Um, so, this is not a new thing. There is clearly a a, a pub culture, as I'll call it, because I, I, my rugby, old rugby club, we used to go on away days and even at home matches. After the game, you would be pretty pissed. Uh, same with my mate's cricket club. After the game, you are annihilated, basically. Um, you're looking a bit wobbly. Um, whether this culture is just kept within the club or on the outside look at Ben Stokes and Alex Hales they got caught outside in a club in a fight how pissed were they? we don't know but the fact they were out on a night out whilst they were on England duty says something um, Zach Hardwick in the past has been done for assault with someone outside in a club in Leeds so there you go um I remember Stephen Gerrard was in court for getting involved in a punch up in a nightclub in, uh, in a Liverpool City Centre whilst down a night out. Now I understand that sportsmen and women need some time off, and it's part of you know working that you do get days off and downtime. Um, we can't treat them like kids; they are adults. They're not breaking any law by going to have a pint down a pub or going to have a glass of wine in a mill in a restaurant. It's it's. Be sensible is obviously the, the um, question there. Now, the fact that there's been a spate of incidents, especially in the last few months, with where cocaine, a, a hardcore class A recreational drug, has been used, is worrying. Um, so, and there isn't a universal testing across all sports. Um, some sports, if it's off season or you're injured, you don't get tested. Others, it's too intermittent, and they're looking for different things. Um, UK anti doping has got no real. They just say don't, don't. It's bad if you do it. Fine, but they're not, are clearly not catching enough people because the whole Bath squad, rugby union squad, six seven years ago, including Matt Stevens, who's I'm using as an example, there was a massive problem with cocaine and speed whilst there as a recreational win or lose we're getting on a sesh that was a a known issue with that team at that time and it spread throughout that club whether the issue is wider than a few isolated incidents you cannot have that this many isolated incidents isolated incidents in this space of time without there being a more widespread issue at top level sport in this country and the attitudes that sport in this country in dealing with these issues it cannot be it is a joke if they think there is also it's the way that when they interviewed McDermott he did not want to be there you could tell I mean his team have won a trophy fine but they, someone needs to sit down with the Castleford coach and go, right, you've had a great season, yes, you lost a final, blah, blah, blah. 
we're interviewing about this issue and how you're going to handle it. And if they talk, if he talks like a commercial droid, you can tell that the chairman, the board, and the owners are saying you need to avoid the questioning. We don't want to give an interview on this subject. And until sports and the team owners and sports owners and sports boards, governing bodies all sit down and give statements and give interviews and start admitting there are problems. This problem is not going to go away and we're going to have another Paul Gascoigne or another George Best or another Bob Probert. Or even Joe Barton, he had a discipline record off, off the field which is more thuggishness but you're going to have more of these high profile incidents which look bad for the sport they're in. Really bad. And these guys are meant to be role models to kids. And people in general, because we have a health crisis right now, we have obesity, uh, lack of exercise amongst adults, kids are not getting enough exercise. These people are role models to, to, to people, to society. And clearly there is a problem with the accessibility of recreationals, the ease again and also are we giving these sportsmen and women enough support when they are feeling stressed or when they are winning or losing the highs and lows that goes with winning and losing are we giving them enough support enough um, help if they're like because a lot of them start off on prescription or medication abuse when they are injured, I have mentioned this before, we rush them back far too quick because the amount of money involved in sport right now with the TV rights, or if it's a growing sport trying to get the TV rights, we need to get our stars out there, out there, out there. And of course there's a drive to win. And that sometimes overshadows what's up here. The drive to win overshadows a bit of, I might need to miss half this season to get my knee fixed. Oh, no, I've got to win that gold. No, if you're going to... Put yourself in a position where you're addicted to painkillers because your body is wrecked. You're going to go on to harder, more dangerous recreationals. As a coping mechanism. As shown by multiple incidents in sport over the last 20, 30 years. Cycling being it being one where amphetamines were right widely uh, used. And alcohol just to numb the pain. 60s and 70s, they were all on it. <laughs> And they weren't actually diving, it was literally just to numb the pain of cycling up Mount Von 2. Seriously. So there are wider implications. It, no sport has come out and said, right, we have a zero tolerance, here is our drug policy, here is our, our, our help programmes, they are in place. Because cricket, they have a three-step thing, and it's normally quiet at first, like, we'll do it quietly, no press whatever, second, no press, third right, you're out. Now, I'm all not for giving people second chances, but people like Zach Hardacre have had four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only so much help you can give someone if they refuse to get it. And even if it's been forced upon them and they still re refuse, then they are a dead weight. Personally. But then it gives a bad image. Because we've got to help everyone these days, you know. Can't have anyone being a failure. No, not allowed. Well... But there are serious issues within sport and they're not clearing it up. And where else needs to be done? Because Zach Ardeka is one of three rugby league players in three months to fail or get caught using recreationals, illegal recreationals, this season. One of the other notable ones, Rangi Chase, no one mentioned it. He is a world class rugby league player. He's played in the NRL and he's played in the Super League. He's a world class player who is very talented and far more experienced than uh, Hardacre. Also, two players in the New Zealand Kiwi setup who play in the NRL were caught after an international Anzac Day test match in Canberra in an oint club in a police operation hence why they only got between them four game ban and got dropped by their clubs for a few weeks and dropped by New Zealand for the World Cup and further tests for the next 12 months that was it whatever the internal discipline fine wise is, is irrelevant 
they were on international duty, they misbehaved, they got caught out. But it shows a, a hole in the system whereby they weren't tested by the anti-doping authorities in Australia and New Zealand, they weren't tested by the World Anti-Doping Authority, they were caught in a police sting. But look, I, I'm going to hold the video here, I'm going to upload it, it's going to be on my Twitter, my Facebook, and obviously on YouTube. Uh, please like and subscribe, please comment in the links below, and uh, see you again soon.